Hello everybody. In this video we're going to use Manifold Viewer, a free product, uh, to uh, open a project that somebody else created to uh, do something really magnificent and wonderful. We're going to look at various archaeological sites in France that virtually nobody else knows about. Now, Manifold Viewer is a highly technical product, but if you open a project that somebody else created, uh, you'll find that it's extremely easy to use. Let's click File, Open, and we're going to open this project called archaeologyfrance.map. That's a here's a, here's a project that was created by somebody who used Radiant Studio, which is the paid version of this software product, uh, to uh, show many different archaeological sites in France. Manifold Viewer is read-only. It's completely free. It's not Nagware. It's uh, there's absolutely no strings attached. It has amazing amounts of capability, and it's generally used by people who are pretty technical people. But if you open a project that somebody else created and pre-format it for you, you need very few technical skills to be able to do truly wonderful things. In the right hand side here we have the project pane and uh, we can double click open on this thing called a map. A map in um, Manifold Viewer, as in Radiant Studio, has multiple layers. We have a bunch of layers down here at the bottom, layer tabs. Uh, ones that are in boldface are turned on. For example, this layer called megalith.fr and Bing. If we click off Bing, we see that eliminates the Bing background map. Layers to the left are above other layers. You can navigate by right-clicking and doing a box. So right-click and drag to draw a box, and Viewer will zoom into that region for you. Uh, to turn the layer off, we double-click it. To turn it on, we click it back on. We're looking at a database here that was created by a bunch of French enthusiasts to map virtually all archaeological features of interest in France, all the way from various Neolithic monuments, like a dolmen and men here that go back uh, to the times of Stonehenge 5,000, 6,000 years ago, to Roman amphitheaters and many other interesting things. If we op click open the table here in the project pane, double click it to open, we can open the table and see what's in this incredibly large database of uh, all sorts of interesting things. Control Enter, go to the end of the table. And uh, what we've done is we've formatted this so that uh, objects here are uh, colored and sized, the icons, by their by the ranking. Uh, the ranking is goes from 0 to 5 with uh, items that are stuff like uh, item number 5, very big and interesting objects. And items that are 0 are kind of routine, they might just be a pile of rocks, they might just be an interesting location. And in the drawing here, the larger dots are uh, more interesting things. We can see what a particular dot is. Let's zoom in to some of the larger ones here. For example, right here near some are there's some cool and interesting things. We can uh, right we can alt click. Well, first we click on the layer to make it active. We alt click on the draw on the object, and that tells us what this. This is a dolmen. If you're curious what a dolmen is, let's use file open to open a uh, JPEG that's here. Oh, no, we use a file. Excuse me, import to import a, uh, well here's a big dolmen. And that's what a dolmen looks like. So some of these are very impo imposing uh, sites. Anyway, back to the project that we've already created. Uh, you can zoom around here if you're traveling from uh, one, s one point in, in, in France to another by, by car. And if you see something along the way, like something here in Thizé, we can zoom a little closer and we can see what that is. Let's uh, alt-click on it. And that's a dolmen. And if we wanted to see what that looks like in kind of from an overhead satellite view, in addition to the uh, Bing Maps layer here, we also have a satellite image layer, which you can double-click on. And as we zoom in, we can see overhead it's, uh, it's one of these big dolmen type dealers like we saw in uh, this image here. So the surprising thing is people drive all over France and, and they're not aware that there are these cool architectural sites uh, nearby them. Now, if you're not into Neolithic monuments like uh, Dolmen and Men here, the sort of things that you should find at Stonehenge, uh, there's many other things that this database shows. And all these are different layers that you can drag and drop into them. I'm going to delete this, delete from map, and show you. Suppose, for example, we are interested in, uh, I'm going to zoom to fit here by right-clicking on the layer and choosing Zoom from the context menu. Let's turn this off. 
Suppose we're interested in Roman amphitheaters. Well, here is a, uh, a drawing that's called amphitheater drawing. If we drag and drop that into the map, we've just added a drawing of Roman amphitheaters that are in France. Now, some of these are the big famous amphitheaters, uh, like the one uh, here. where I'll bet if we turn on the satellite image and we turn off this, we'll see that it is indeed a large and functioning Roman amphitheater. So all those are in, in this database as well. But what's interesting about this, if I uh, right-click on that and choose Zoom to zoom to fit to that drawing, and I'll turn Bing back on, is it turns out there's uh, surprisingly many amphitheaters that are not that far away. So for example, let's say we're here in the uh, Valley of the Loire near Samur and we see this dot. We can uh, I'll click on the layer to make it active and then I'll alt click on that and I'll see hmm it's something having to do with an amphitheater. Let's get a little closer and here I see there's another amphitheater. There's two, there's two over top of each other and we'll turn the satellite image on, turn Bing off and we'll see that right here near Samur, there are th there's the remnants of a Roman amphitheater. If you actually look at this thing at ground level, you'll see that you can see the original uh, fighting uh, scenario for the amphitheater, and you see around here the remnants of the, the seating. So who would have thought that if uh, you're visiting near Samur, that there's a Roman amphitheater that's actually located not far off the uh, beaten track where you're visiting uh, wineries and such. At the same time, Let's turn on this Dolman drawing. Uh, this is these are, this is just the Dolmans that have been pulled out of the uh, database. So you can see near near here, not only are there uh, lots of uh, amphitheaters, there's also uh, Dolman, and there's all kinds of other sorts of Neolithic objects. Let's zoom in here and see what's this what this is. This Bing layer, by the way, is semi-transparent. So if I look close, if, we, if I zoom close and turn that off into the Bing layer, we can see it is indeed one of these big Dolman that is just like this image here that was photographed. Uh, what else can we find out about this drawing and what else can we learn? Like I say, anything that we want to see here we can drag and drop in into this into it. We can turn off various layers to make them easier to use. There's actually two Bing images here. There's one which is uh, uh, the regular Bing street map image that's being pulled in from the Bing server. It's pulling in tiles as we uh, speak. Uh, by the way, this is being filmed in uh, Europe, so uh, I don't know where this Bing image uh, server is actually located. It's probably coming in from some server that's in England or something like that. Anyway, there's two Bing layers that I have here. One's semi-transparent, so it looks a little fainter. The semi-transparent one makes it easier to see the smaller dots like this one you know, here than the big one. But you can turn them on and off as you, as you like. What are the various objects here that we're looking at? Turn off the dome and turn off that. There's men here, which are uh, vertical column rocks. Some of them can be enormous. If you go out toward the, in the region of Karnak and Brittany, they can be uh, twice as tall as a house. Other uh, men here are only about as tall as a person is, and some are only about as half as tall as a person. But they, too, are emissaries from the Neolithic. They are typically four to 6,000 years old. And they're all over France, as you can see here. It's kind of almost hard to drive somewhere in France and not drive near a dolmen. Uh, here in Le Mans, for example, or men here. There's a men here, uh, a vertical rock, ancient rock that's been embedded in the side of a cathedral. Cathedral. When Christianity came to France, a lot of the original churches started incorporating these uh, Neolithic uh, monuments because the local people cont had continued to worship them, so they converted them to uh, use as Christian symbols. Uh, what else do we have? We have cromlechs. A cromlech is a uh, is a circle of stones. I can turn off the men here and let's see where all the cromlechs are. Uh, Stonehenge is a really big cromlech. And right here out in Karnak, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of Karnak cromlechs. There's this one here. Let's take zoom in and see what it is. I'm doing this on the fly, by the way. None of this is scripted. I'm just kind of fooling around with the image here, trying to see what I can see. Yeah, I'll turn off this image. And here we can see the arrangement of stones. This one is, uh, as a cromlech, is uh, it's kind of a square arrangement. It's not a circular arrangement like Stonehenge. But when you see these things in real life, quite often you'll see circles of stones within stones. Some of them are in farmer's fields. Some of them uh, 
you can drive to. Some of them you have to drive nearby and walk to it, for example, like this one here. Uh, the nice thing about France is that a lot of these uh, Neolithic monuments are pretty easy to get to, surprisingly easy to get to. Let's go back to the amphitheaters because there's some very cool Roman amphitheaters in places where you'd never expect to see them. Okay, so I have Bing turned on, I have the amphitheaters turned on. Let's zoom to where all the amphitheaters are. Uh, right here, for example, near Orléans. So if you're driving from Tours to Orléans and you're visiting a bu bunch of chateaux, uh, there are very famous chateaux here in the region, for example, Chambord and uh, Chenonceau and those sorts of things in your rent a car. Drive over here to where this thing is located. And right off the side of the road, it's kind of hard to believe, but there it is. Very easy to get to. You will find the remnants of a Roman amphitheater. And there it is. You just drive down this road right next to the nice pretty canal, park your car here, walk around a Roman amphitheater, have a picnic lunch, and uh, you're going to see something that no tourist who's been uh, driving around France is going to see, unless they just happen to run into it and wonder, what the heck is that thing? Okay, what else do we have? Besides amphitheaters, we have uh, some to fit there. Uh, we have dolmens, we have cupules, which are wells, we have camps, which are various Roman camps. They're all over. Uh, we have apodiums. An apodium is a, a, apodim, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, uh, is a uh, typically a Celtic or Gallic fortress. Sometimes it's an old Roman fortress, and here, here they are. And uh, the ones I'm most familiar with are the ones that are around Tours and Blois and those sorts of places, because those are very near to where uh, the wine trails are, and that's, of course, where all the tourists want to go. Let's see if we can see what this apodem is. I'm going to click on it first to alt click to see what it says. Okay. Take a closer look. Turn on the satellite. You know, not a whole lot to see there. So, whatever's left of this particular fortress, I, I don't know why it's a five. I suppose because right around here you can probably see ramparts of it. Or uh, leftover, you know, from ground level, leftover ramparts. But there you go. That's part of the excitement of discovering new things like this uh, uh, in your travels. Now, where did all this data come from, and uh, how do we find all this data? Uh, this particular uh, database, which we see, and uh, we turn on the whole thing in the megalith. That's uh, absolutely all the objects. Uh, was downloaded from a site called Megalith. Uh, that's M-E-G-A-L-I-T-H-E dot F-R. It's a French website. Uh, and it was uh, downloaded as a geocoded table, which we then imported using Radian. And using various uh, techniques in Radian, we split it out to all these different layers, and then we colored them in various ways. Uh, we can change the colors here if we want. And then we save the project. And once we save the project as a Radian map, anybody who has a uh, uh, manifold viewer can look at it. Right, this is cool. Let's look at temples. Let's rather, let's drag and draw, drop that into the map. Let's turn on Bing. So there's cool temples uh, here in Lyon, and there's cool temples elsewhere. This temple here, which is a tiny little dot, which is near Vendôme. Actually, some of these dots are so tiny you have to. They're barely visible if you don't turn off the Bing layer. Uh, some of these are just remnants of uh, tables. Let's see what else we want to do. Ah, uh, theaters. Theaters are cool. Let's see what the theaters are. So there's a big theater in Lyon, obviously. I bet that one we can see in the satellite view. Yep couple of big theaters. So in Lyon we have these big Roman amphitheaters and a lot of Roman ruins. Okay, that's wonderful. Well anyway, so here we've uh, downloaded a, uh, a free map file. You can get this map file, by the way, when you download Viewer in the, in the Download Viewer page in uh, Manifold. There's some interesting, additional interesting data sets, and data sets, and one of them is this archaeologyfrance.map. Uh, so download that. Open, when you download and install Viewer, 
uh, you can double click that dot map to uh, open in viewer and this is what you get to see and you can try out all these different layers and play with them you can add different things uh, if you look at the uh, manifold sales channel on YouTube where you're watching this video uh, you'll see there's a whole lot of other uh, cool uh, uh, data sets and videos those are kind of for, for more advanced users so you know let's not uh, let's not play that up too much but uh, there's many 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 more things you can do here uh, for example let's turn on the dolmen and I'll turn on Bing and I'll turn off the theaters turn off the temples and here we're gonna zoom into near somewhere which is always fun and we're gonna look at in a uh, Bing Maps the satellite image if you're into things like uh, Middle Ages and Renaissance times, here's the Great Fortress at Samur, which is uh, always cool to see. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, goodbye from uh, Radian Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS, at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.